I respect all women that are contributing in the 4B movement because that's something very powerful because sex is power. Do you believe there's a gender war, and if so, who's winning? Um, I don't believe there's a gender war, but if there was a team winning, I would believe it's women. Why? Because women are powerful. Women are the, the sustainability of this country, and Earth, honestly. I think that we have a lot more choices today. We have a lot more options. Um, things are more in our favor. Men. Why? Because men are doing better as women in women industry in general when it comes to sports athletics of course and then you have like the fact that Caitlyn Jenner wore the best woman award the first year she was a woman men are always winning because yeah. they just think they're on top because they think they win but us well, women are truly uh, women winning oh definitely the women are winning because they have too much power in court I mean they really do I mean child support and alimony and all that it's just, it's, none of it's fair. How is it a gender war when it's not all men and it's not all women? Complicated question, but because we are equally seeing discrepancies on each side. If it's a gender war, why are we only hearing one side? Because mainstream media is helping to generate this fake wave. Do you think men and women are purposely being divided by society? And if so, what can we do to repair the damage? Yes, I do think we're being divided as from each other. Like men are made to hate women, women are made to hate. But we need to communicate for real. Honestly, I feel like people are on social media too much. And I feel like that could really, if like social media wasn't such a prevalent thing in our lives, I think it could definitely like change the movement of like hate men, hate women type of thing. Men have taken a really big turn in not being providers or, you know, financially or mentally or emotionally for women as supportive as they should be. And women are becoming the providers and they're, they're doing these things and stepping into more masculine energy. So you have like this kind of imbalance. Um, I think if maybe Trump wasn't in office, we could maybe repair the damage. Like if Obama was back. But I'm also Canadian. I think a lot of women, a lot of women I know are going off the perspective that Trump is bad and they haven't actually looked up what is going on. He's not going to, not every state is going to ban abortion and not every state is going to stand, you know, with that. You're still going to be able to have abortions. You're still going to be able to do the things that you want to do. You're not, nothing's really going to be affected that much, but people are, are dramatically like throwing themselves into this oh everything's going to change for us and everything's going to be done for we got to relax and we got to just calm down and look at what everything that's really going on i would say just stop talking about it like it's it's like a thing like like racism i feel like the more you talk about it the more it's going to exist and i feel like it's the same thing with gender who lies more men or women and why women <laughs> I will be honest, because we want to hold back certain things so we do not affect our men. That's probably an equal standard. Men probably think women lie more and women probably think men lie more because everyone's been hurt. I think women lie better, men lie more. I think women lie more. I think we're more sneaky. Honestly, they're way more sneaky. And honestly, if you go through a person's phone, you'll know. But I'm not a person to go through somebody's phone. Who cheats more, men or women, and why? women <laughs> and why is because we're not getting fulfilled at our homestead well but everybody cheats because of a lack of what they do or don't have in a relationship right like for men it, it may be physical but for women it's more emotional so if a woman cheats i think it's it's a little bit more kind of cuts it a little bit deeper because she thought about that shit <laughs> men cheat because they are sexually unfulfilled and women cheat because they're emotionally unfulfilled I think women cheat more because they're always looking for a bigger, better deal. They are always saying, I deserve better. Who is held more accountable, men or women, and why? Men are held more accountable for what we do, but women are not held accountable for what they do enough. Who is more sexist, men or women, and why? Oh, definitely women as well. Sorry, women, I'm bashing, but I'm not. These are true facts. Can you give an example? Like, why do you say that? 
Um, because we always want them to be a certain way, follow a certain structure, or be a certain kind of way instead of being their selves. I would say men, to be honest, because they don't want to see women in power, and that's just the truth. Men, because they're misogynistic assholes. Can you say something good about men? They help create life. Why is it more socially acceptable for women to hate men than it is for men to hate women? Because... <laughs> that's a good question. Can you say something good about men? Oh, of course. Good dick. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Their strength? <laughs> I think if men are respectable, they're great human no. beings. And, and if they're a go-getter, because some men are not as strong-willed, as long as they're strong-willed, their strength, and of course... Can you say something good about women? I think that they are very beautiful creatures. I honestly love women. I like the intellect. It's the fact that they're kind of like not so a straight line. Like men are kind of a straight line, simple, but women are kind of like this curved, like beautiful rhythm. I guess, <laughs> you know. Why is it more socially acceptable for women to hate men than it is for men to hate women? I think because this country is built on misogyny and honestly the earth in general is built on misogyny. So women taking back their power, it, it makes a lot of sense and that's why it's more normalized in today's society. Because girls are for the girls. Um, and I feel like there's a lot more girls on the social platforms than there are like a, men for men. If it's acceptable for women to hate men, how are men and women ever supposed to get together? Um, I think that it's to each their own. There are a lot of um, misandrists in the world, but at the end of the day, I feel like men and women, they do come together and there shouldn't be a, a power inequality. It's really, I think it's honestly all a toxic cycle and I think we should really all try to get out of it. I feel like it's just negative energy on the internet. <laughs> Why were feminists never considered a hate group, yet men merely fighting for their equal rights are? Because it was women. Nobody really, nobody really wants to hate on women. That's what women don't understand. You know, like nobody's against you. We're actually here for you. But they feel like because of the things they've seen and the things that go on with social media that we're against them. Haven't women expressed the most hate from the start? <sighs> yeah, they're more, more emotional. So they would naturally express more hate. Well, isn't it hateful for radical feminists to say things like kill all men and drink male tears? Yeah, absolutely. But I think we can do a lot of work of trying to kill that narrative and do something better with it. Drink male tears and kill all men? Sure, there's radical people on both sides. I think that they are also wrong. I think anybody that hates somebody to the point that they want to drink people's tears is wrong. Would you assume a lonely old cat lady hates men and feels entitled to a relationship? No, because I will be that old cat lady and I would not hate men and I don't feel whatever you said. <laughs> so why would we assume lonely young men hate women and feel entitled to sex? Um, I don't think lonely young men hate women, but they do feel like they are deserving of sex when there's things that come before that. I think women have evolved and I think good for them because we used to be clean the house, cook the food. Um, we are equal to men, so what the hell. What is the definition of misogyny? Hating women. What is the definition of misandry? I have no idea. <laughs> Why have more people heard of misogyny than misandry? Because this is what the country is built upon. That's what it is throughout historical that women are always put last and men are put first when women really run the, run the economy. Doesn't chivalry place women first? Uh, and in some circumstances, yes, but I feel like it's still a power inequality because um, men view themselves as top priority and they put their women, of course, in front of that, but they think that they hold all the power. Do you think that misandry is as socially dangerous as misogyny? And if so, why? Socially dangerous, no. Why? Honestly, I don't know. I've never heard of misandry until this moment. <laughs> I think they're both equally the same, but we pay attention to one more than we do the other, and that's wrong in itself, yeah. Feminism claims to be about equality, but is often confused with man-hating. How can feminists repair this misconception? I feel like a true feminist um, doesn't hate on men, and a true feminist views 
people or views men as equal to them. And I feel like that isn't something we got to repair. That's just something that's misconstructed in today's society. Why aren't you able to talk about the needs and wants of men without automatically undermining the needs and wants of women? In other words, why does it have to be a zero-sum game? Because I'm a woman and I'm not a man, so I do not know what men struggle with. I just know what women do, and women struggle a lot with men. In other words, why does one gender winning have to mean that the other gender is losing? I wouldn't say that. I say that men and women can be equal, but in the society and the nation that we live in, men and women aren't equal. And that's further proven by wage gaps and how people view men and men versus women, where women are mostly put in compromising positions and undermined in a lot of scenarios, whereas men are placed at the top, but that's not necessarily where, where credit is given. That's just what, the role that they're placed in. Is it possible to empower men without hurting women? Absolutely. Is it possible to empower women without hurting men? Absolutely. Why does one gender winning have to mean that the other gender is losing? Because that's BS. Because we're supposed to win together. How does giving men more rights seen as removing rights from women? It's not. Because if we uphold them, then it will gain us too as well. How does giving men more rights seen as removing rights from women? Because men already have a lot more rights than women have. Can you name any rights that men have that women don't? Not off the top of my head. Things are more in our favor. I think men have always had a higher power, so a lot of women feel undermined by men since the beginning, always having the upper hand. What privileges does the average man have? I have no answer for you, honestly. What is the 4B movement? The 4B movement is basically, it's, it originally started in Korea, I believe, and women aren't having sex with men, women aren't reproducing with men because of the um, economic structure of men being placed beforehand and men being top priority and women being viewed as less. It's a way for women to stick it to the man, but in a more literal term. So we are taking the power back, refraining from sex, not giving them what they want, and keeping our sanity in the process. It started in South Korea, and now it's moving across the globe after Trump got elected. I respect all women that are contributing in the 4B movement because that's something very powerful because sex is power. Why is sex typically the first thing that's withheld when women don't get what they want? Because that's, that's the forefront. That's what, what power is in the relationship. What does that say about what women actually contribute to a relationship? I say that doesn't say a lot about what women contribute because that is what that is what's from a man's perspective, you know what I mean? Like that's what that's what's top priority for a man. When a man introduces himself to a woman, he that is always what's on the forefront of his mind. It's not always about who the person is inside. Of course there are men that are like that, but sex is always top priority to men and I feel like women holding that back is respect for themselves and that's that's creating more power in women's structure. Isn't that the same thing as using sex as a weapon against men? I wouldn't say it's using sex as a weapon but it is I mean if you can't constrain yourself as a man and you feel like sex is is a weapon then I guess it would be considered a weapon in that case. Why were feminists never considered a hate group yet men merely fighting for their equal rights are? Good question. Never looked at anything of that sort. And that's because once I say it, they're trying to digress us to digress our men in order for them to have control. I feel like feminists are in a hate group because feminism is women trying to get that equality in a man-powered world. And um, you said men, men what? Men have a long line of history of hating women. And I think that it's really negatively affected women. And women can hate men, but it's never super negatively affected men in the way that it has the women. I don't know, it's, it's weird because men don't need that power. Men already have that power, so that's why it's not considered the same. A lot of the issues that I bring up on this channel are often met with responses like, it goes both ways. If it does go both ways, why do women dominate the mainstream media when talking about women's issues while men's issues are forced to remain online? I don't think men's issues are forced to be anything that women's issues aren't. Men's issues are definitely important, but women's issues have been suppressed so long that I feel like women are really coming to the forefront. We respect the women more. It's like everybody does, not even just men. Everybody respects the women more than the men because... The historical oppression that women believe that they need reparations for, and I believe that's why it's talked about more. 
Um, and I feel like, like I said, men are more reserved and, and don't really want to talk about it. Maybe because women speak up more about their issues than men do. Maybe they feel like they can't because um, they might feel less than. Do you think the problem is that men don't speak up or do you think the problem is that men aren't heard when they do speak up? I think that they don't speak up. Like I said, men's feelings are made, are, are us expressing ourselves was made to be kind of silenced and not like brought about or you're not, you weren't brought up to talk about your stuff, uh, stuff as a man. If we consider that the mainstream media, social media, TV, newspaper are all owned by powerful men, the real patriarchy of this world, who is giving women so much airtime and platform to challenge the patriarchy? Men. Why? Because men like looking at women. If it's not the government, it's the media. It's, you got to think of the agenda. I mean, there's people say there's no agenda. Some people be like, there's an agenda, but there is an agenda or else there wouldn't, your perspective wouldn't be what it is. So I just think they want to push these things because women will manipulate the men. That's why women will definitely get the men to do whatever men want to do.